Okay, let's talk about DNS security. So, DNS is one of the most required things there is in a network. Everything runs on DNS, and therefore it's also one of the main things to get attacked. So, in order to protect your DNS, and when you protect your DNS, you are effectively protecting your network, we can use Palo Alto Networks, of course, yeah, because that's what I do. So the license is required for this, the threat prevention license and the DNS security license, sort of intuitive. So what is DNS security? Well, I'm not gonna read it word for word, but basically it's an evolving threat detection service that is designed to protect your network from malicious domains. So it's maintained on the database, shared between all um, Palo Alto Networks endpoints. When they use wildfire, you get them down in your um, anti antivirus subscription, you get them down in the content packs. So that's all your signatures that are, are fixed and on the box. Because DNS is often used for malware to call home, and receive instructions. It is one of the most important things and for that reason Palo Alto Networks have a signature based system as I say that's downloaded onto the box but then also it uses a cloud based system and only refers to the signatures that are on the box if it can't connect to the cloud. Then the idea is to do DNS sync calling for malicious domains so that actually that then cuts their connectivity off but it also provides another route for us to potentially identify infected hosts. An overview of how the whole system works together is you've got the wildfire traffic analysis data you can see there, you've got the firewall telemetry, do you remember that box at the start, do you want to enable the telemetry or do you want to not? So it uses that. Then you've got malicious web content analysis, active crawling, manual submissions, and who is database. That's all the stuff that they're doing. And then Cyber Threat Alliance and HoneyNet, as well as Unit 42's own research data. That all comes up into this lovely looking blue and orange block, which does machine learning, predictive, detection, and then that pops out the DNS signatures and protections. So what do you get protection from? Well, including but not limited to domain generation algorithms uh, which are used as suggested in this slide to generate domains in large quantities uh, this is going to be for command and control channels it's going to give them a resiliency and as you know if you've looked into security at any point botnets cnc it, they're so resilient it, it's very difficult to take them down once they become established dns tunneling of course, everybody knows, every attacker knows that DNS is going to be allowed on a network. It's not, not going to be allowed in one form or another. And so if you can encode non-DNS programs into DNS queries and responses, you can effectively give yourself a, a backdoor into operating systems, into um, file servers, so on and so forth. And of course, we've got the good old known malicious domains, which makes sense. Uh, and as the name suggests, uh, domains that are known to be malicious. Um, and this is going to be your instantaneous protection. So somebody gets a phishing email, they go to click a link, they click the link, your firewall knows it's malicious and it blocks it immediately and alerts to it. So that's pretty much what it is. It makes a lot of sense to use it. Uh, and yeah, not only that, it's very easy to set up. So I'm going to go ahead now and set it up and then we're going to trigger a couple and have a look and see what what it looks like when it's triggered. So the DNS security is enforced through the anti-spyware profile and that is under objects anti-spyware. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, the strict is uh, Palo Alto's um, best practice. Uh, so that's what's included on all of them. Okay, but obviously we can't edit that because it's one of the default profiles. So we clone it. Okay.
Okay. Give it a name. Best practice profile. Okay. So for our rules, these are our rules for logging. So and our actions as well. So threat name any category any and you can choose any of these so DNS security, DNS wildfire, web shell. Action is to reset both, which will send a reset to either side, both the client and the server. Packet catcher disable, you can do a single packet or extended capture on that one. And you can select uh, which ones you're gonna you're gonna alert on or you're gonna block. So for critical you want to reset both, that makes sense. All these will log. Simple high, reset both, uh, default, low, default. Exceptions. You'll find a lot of exceptions here, so and here we see how many signatures we've got. So if we do a show all signatures. So currently within the threat database in the, immediately there for the firewall to use is 13,337 threats. In here I always put these two as an exception. The reason is because they come up so often and it is just it's just a false positive. And the way you do that is simply enable that as an exception. DNS signatures. So the Palo Alto Network's content DNS signatures, that's the ones that it downloads in the, the content updates. And the Palo Alto Network's DNS security, that is the cloud security side. I don't quite know why it says to sinkhole that one and not this one, but best practice is to sinkhole both. And by default, this will be filled in. I mean, you can change that to um, whatever you want. You can send it back to your loopback and then log on your loopback, or you can send it to there. It might as well send it to there. Click OK. And then to apply that to a policy, not on that policy because that should be daft. So we can now apply this to a policy and we'll use our monitoring because that's got no policies attached to it. And profile setting, profiles, anti-spyware, and then we can put that in there. Now if we log at session end, log forwarding going to Plex Splunk, um, I'll Log at the session end, is, it makes sense, you log at the session end, don't log at the session start because your logs will just get absolutely hammered regardless of whether the traffic's allowed or not. So log at session end and then um, I have the plugin, Palo Alto plugin on Splunk, so we can have a look at that to show the, the threats and then I'll show you on the ACC as well and the monitor here because Palo also supply some test URLs that you can go to to make sure this is all being uh, sync-old. Okay, in its own time, and then good old commit. So this is on my Splunk instance, and we can see that the firewall is now registering three network instances per hour. We can see the times when it's it's tried. These are the URLs is tried to go to, the severity, the fact that it was dropped, and then strangely, oddly enough, I went looking for the IP address so that we could do the finding compromised hosts part of this, and just tried NS lookup, and it actually hit drop that as well as being spyware, so, um, sorry, it's been a malicious dom domain. So there's that as well. Um, and this allows you to to drill down into it as well. It, you can look at the record, instant context, as they call it. So instant details, 
where it's going, vendor actions, in call, so on. So now we're going to test the configuration. And to do this, Palo Alto provides some test URLs. So we can just fire off against those and we can see that it's going to be sync hold. And then um, we need to get an alert from that so that we know it. Then moving from there, we're then going to look at the detection of the host making the calls, um, set up a report so that we can have uh, a report that we can run. And then later, um, hopefully next week, there'll be another, another video where we can do this automatically through XOR uh, and then fire off email reports. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so here we are on the um, reports page, Managed Customer Reports. I've created the report already, but let's go and have a look and see if we can get some uh, some results into it first. Eh? So we'll try the first of the uh, URLs. And that should just give us that. We'll try this one, which is for the command and control. This one, which is to simulate um, dynamic domain um, creation. Can't get my words out. Then finally, this one for testing DNS tunneling, as the URL would tend to suggest. Okay, so none of those were successful. So let's go. We'll have a look at our threat logs on here, and we can see the results here. Are they always at the time? and how it's been sync all. Okay, that's the action. But, in this particular instance, as you can see, sorry, it is midnight, cup of coffee. The source address is my firewall address. Well, it's not my firewall address, it's my gateway. And that is because I'm using DNS proxy. So, you may well ask, how then are we supposed to find out who's making the calls and thus who is a potentially compromised host. Well, as I already alluded to, if we go to custom reports, this is going to be the best way of, of showing this. So I happen to know that the address, the IP address that the URL, the sinkhole URL uh, goes to or resolves to is this one here. So yes, of course, the DNS request is going to come from my DNS proxy address because that's where it's going to come from. However, the subsequent call trying to reach this address for the DNS lookup will come from the host. So if we run this report now, it'll take a bit of time. we can see that these two badges right here are the ones that are making the call and where they're making it to and then you can do what you wish with that, you can export it to PDF, CSV or XML uh, that's all good and then that's a report you, you can show to whoever um, as I say the plan is now to do a video based on XOR uh, because although that's fine and you can do that, it is a bit old school uh, what would be nice, you can of course schedule the reports and then you can email that report on a scheduled basis so one way you could look at it if you don't want to put XOR in but you know I mean we're moving forward and as, as we always say detection really is 99% of, of the game won if you can detect something quickly you can act on it if you have a compromised host that's making that's making calls out for a week before you want to run a report well then you, you know you could potentially end up with issues however that said it's also important to realize that those dns requests are being sync old anyway so whoever they're trying to reach they're not reaching okay so i hope that's been helpful um please like and subscribe leave comments below if there's anything you want to see anything you didn't like i'm boring whatever and I will see you for the next video, which hopefully won't take as long to come out as this one did.